G'day folks, it's Rob, Jack and a butcher bird here. Uh, today we're going to finish off the little aquaponic system up here on the deck. We have a soil bed over there I need to plumb in and also a Dutch bucket on that side. So I'll stop yabbering on and we'll hook into the video. By the way, this is a part two. Part one is the actual building of the basic aquaponic system. So you can check it out via a link down in the description. Just before we hook in, I'll bring you up to speed on what has been done. I have swapped the pump out. The old pump was rather loud and noisy and now we've been joined by a magpie. Uh, the old pump was rather loud and noisy. I'll give you a bit of a taste of it now. So I decided that I would pull it out and replace it with a smaller pump. This one here was actually 3000 liters an hour and this one down here is a small little 1200 liter an hour. So it will use a lot less power and there will be a lot less vibration in the water to annoy the fish as well. So I think it was a good decision to make, not only for the fish, but also on the power consumption side of things. I have also been feeding it up with fish emulsion and doing the water test and it does look like the system is cycled. I'm not seeing any nitrite or ammonia of great amount in the test. There'll always be a little bit of ammonia uh, when you test in aquaponics, but yeah, no nitrite, which to me is a good sign that it is cycled. You can also see that the lettuce has taken off really well. Uh, the uh, oregano, oregano is doing okay as well. And so are the green onions over the back. I have seen no sign at all of little peppermint seedlings poking their heads out. So I think it may be just a little bit too moist and a little bit cool at the moment to get those seeds germinated. So what I've done is bought a peppermint seedling that we can pop in there for Bianca. Now we'll tackle the soil bed first. The soil bed is sitting on an old IBC cage. Quite obviously the legs that came with the planter aren't quite tall enough for this little fish tank. This is actually the original stand for our moving bed bioreactor and radial flow settler on our first system. It's just a bit of an IBC. I've given it a nice decent paint job now, so it's nice and brown, blends in a little bit better. And I've zip tied on a couple of um, palings, old um, battens from under our house before it was renovated for the bed to sit on. Oh, and down there as well, if Jack would move, come on buddy, out you come. We have a waterproof box because the cord from that pump there isn't long enough to make it all the way over to the power point there. And I'll also be able to pop in the little air pump that we plan to give the, the air to the fish in there. Now onto the build for the soil bed itself. It's basically going to be a flow through wicking bed. Uh, to begin with, we need a false bottom in here. I had a couple of ideas. I was playing around with using stainless steel mesh and then setting it up on some little legs but I decided no I really want that stainless steel mesh for something else. The other option I had was to use some slotted ag pipe that we use as a reservoir in wicking barrels and beds but I decided that they will stand a little bit too tall they're about 100 mil or four inches in diameter so I went with another piece of recycled wicking bed reservoir and that was sections of old bread crate from a wicking bed that I had pulled down last year. So with this section of bread crate, all I did was trim the sides down using a jigsaw just to make sure it fit in the base of the wicking bed. And then I also created a couple of holes so we could have the sand wicks going down into the reservoir come up through the base of the grate. Now I've used some PVC pipe here and what that does is it actually helps the base stay off the ground and also drilled some holes in there as well. So that will allow water to go on the inside of these little sections of pipe and wick up through the sand, uh, which will be held back by geotextile. So we have enough um, water coming up into the soil layer. So I didn't have to go for PVC legs. I just went with it because I had those offcuts laying around. You could use small little pots like this or a neck cup um, if you so choose to. Uh, just basically something that would be sturdy enough to take the weight of the soil and the grate that would be sitting on top. So that's pretty much well the, um, the base there. As for an outlet, what I've decided to use is some 15 mil or half inch PVC pipe fittings 
drilled a hole in there nice and tight so I could screw the fitting through. The hole I drilled for this fitting was very tight so I basically had to cut a thread with the PVC fitting and I could have just left that be but I decided to pop another o-ring and another fitting on the inside as well just to make sure that if it gets bumped or knocked around and that thread becomes loose we're not going to have any water leaking out um, from that little outside area there. And on the outside there all I'm going to do is push in this 90 degree elbow with some sections of pipe in it and that water will just drain directly down into the fish tank itself. Now I've actually put this grate in the wrong way around and the reason for that is I need a little space in the grate here for this in tube. It's just basically a little bit of one inch or 25 mil irrigation pipe poly pipe and I've chopped out some slots in the base to allow the water to drain down into the reservoir. Just to show you on this pipe I have drilled some holes there and over on this container we have some holes as well to receive a zip tie. Uh, the main reason being is I would like it in place and if people come along and decide to play around with this um, they may potentially um, move the pipe or pull it out and cause issues. So we're just going to pop that zip tie through there and I always drill the hole in the pipe higher than where it's going through the container and that way it's always pulled down so this might be a little bit tricky from this angle, but we'll see how we go. Oh yeah, no, we've got him nice and tight. So there we go, that's not going anywhere. So we're obviously going to need something on that grate to stop the sand and soil falling through. So what I'll be using is this landscape fabric or geotextile. It's used all around the world just to um, hold back earthen banks and that sort of thing, separate different layers of soil. So this is just going down in here and I'll be pushing little extra sections down through these um, little gaps and basically just forming it around the side like that and what will happen is the soil will keep the fabric up against the side so none of it falls through. So just try and make sure there's a nice amount in there. So now we're ready to put the wicking medium in, which is going to be basically this coarse sand. I use it in the um, wicking beds down the back. It's as easy as tipping it in, really. I'm going to try and stop Jack from bumping the camera again and just put, popping it down in those holes there. So it goes all the way down to the base. And then I will be putting a layer all over this geotextile as well pop the rest in there. The main reason I put this sand in here is it just also helps to um, wick the water out as well as up. So we um, hopefully get a nice even wicking action from these two spots here. So I have two lots of soil I'm going to be putting in here. This first lot is brand new premium potting mix uh, that I've purchased. It's full of organic matter so it's going to be really good at wicking the soil up. And this second lot here is recycled soil from the old veggie pod down the back. It's got a load of perlite in there. I'm really just trying to stretch out the soil mix in here. I figure there will be more than enough nutrient within these two blends to get the plants going. Plus there will be added nutrients coming through the aquaponics water as well. It's trying to make sure this pushes out against the side there. Get that out nice and firm. There we go. Put some of this recycled in now out around the sides. And to that I'll be adding in some of this activated rock minerals uh, that we use. It's called Vegemate. I'll put a link down in the description. It's got some bacteria in there as well which help make those um, elements available to the plants. And I think I'll pretty much all fill the rest up with the good potting mix. Just add a little bit more on top and I think that should pretty much will be it. Don't want to overdo it too much or spill too much of it into the um, little aquaponic system there either. This bed also has a little brace here for the center just to keep it all together. So we'll pop that in. Just stops the center from bowing out. So there we go. There we have the bed filled up and ready to go. The inflow needs to be sorted out, but first we'll work on the Dutch bucket. A quick reminder before we hook on into the Dutch bucket side of the build, I do have that online interactive backyard aquaponics for beginners guide. Great for you folks who are just learning about aquaponics. It's not only a guide, there's also downloadable PDFs and you can also ask me for help via a little button down the bottom where it says advice and I'll get back to you within 24 hours. 
for you know, any issues you have with a new build or maybe something that's going wrong with your current system. And I also do have a few items for sale via my online store, link for that down in the description below. That's enough me spruiking and trying to pay the bills for the new farm, back to the Dutch bucket build. Now, Dutch buckets aren't anything new. There's loads of videos around on YouTube on how to make these, so yeah, there'll be a link down in the description you can check out. Now, it's you know essentially pretty easy. What I want is this elbow here, if you can imagine it's on the inside, to sit a little bit off the base, so round about there, so we can have the water enter into it and out through the drain. So we'll mark roughly round about there. It's not exactly rocket science. So I'll be using a uni seal to run the pipe work through, but you could use things like the PVC fitting I used previously, uh, a, co a combination of them, or you could use something like this top hat um, grommet and an elbow, barbed elbow, if you have them available. I know they're not available all around the world. Uni seals are pretty universal and it works out a lot cheaper than using the threaded fitting, so that's why I've gone with them. Now, to begin with, I will start off uh, with a pilot hole. I suppose I could move that just because I know the drill bit on my hole saw is a little bit blunt. So I will be running the hole saw in reverse because if the teeth move forward and grab this thin plastic, it's just gonna rip it to shreds. There we go. I'm just gonna take off any plastic that may cause issues with the uni seals. That's one of the main reasons uni seals fail is people leave little bits of plastic in there. Just remove any that's on the inside here as well. Uh, the other reason that uni seals fail quite often is people don't use the correct hole size. Yeah, they're, they're a little bit loose on the hole diameter that they make. So yeah, that can cause issues. Now, all I need to do is pop through this uni seal. And this section of pipe that will be going in it does help if you can lubricate them a bit. Uh, just a little bit of water generally is enough for this size pipe. I want this one to go in round about halfway, I think. There we go, I think that's beautiful. And then the 90 degree elbow just goes on the end like that. So we now have that 90 degree elbow in there and that will be picking up the water and sending it out this drain and down this drain pipe here. So we'll just pop this over here now. And there we go. That little drain down there will pick up the water and deliver it down into the fish tank. Now in there, I will be putting some more clay media, but obviously they can choke up that little drain in there. So what I was going to do was use my faithful old biochar compost bag, but unfortunately she's a little bit old and got a couple of holes in it. So I decided to make up a new one using some insect netting. I just cut off a little bit of scrap sewed up around the outside with some twine and then made a little um, slip section up the top so I could basically pop it in here and tie it up around the side just under these little rims here or these little lips just to make sure she doesn't fall all the way in. Cost me next to nothing, a lot cheaper than buying some more paint strainers down at the hardware. Now all I have to do is fill it up with the clay. So now we have the Dutch bucket and the soil bed all filled up. We need to give them some water, I suppose. First, I should probably turn the water off so we can play around with this hose line. And I will be using this half inch, or I think it's a 13 mil um, irrigation line, commonly available here in Australia, uh, that takes the little 13 mil barb fittings we have just to run the water out to the different beds. So I'm going to have to alter this design a little bit. Um, what I'm going to do is remove this top section from the existing T. So what I want is a little valve on this side to manage the flow going out. So the little setup I'm going to be making is going to involve a couple of T's. I'm going to have one here that takes this little overflow that goes back into the fish tank. So what I need to do is raise this pipework up high enough so I can split it again, one section out to the Dutch bucket and one section out to the soil bed. And I'll pop a T on top of that, which will run the lines out to the grow beds, uh, which will plumb up now, starting with the soil one. The little valve assembly that runs into the soil bed was pretty easy. It's basically two 90 degree elbows pushed together using a little section of pipe in the middle 
and then another section of pipe with a valve at the end to help control the inflow. So the next thing I'm going to do is put the inlet in here for the saw bed. I've actually made it so that barb sticks underneath the zip tie so it doesn't fall out easily. And it also has a valve on it to control the flow. So we're just going to push this fitting through into the irrigation line and set it up down through the back here and have this just push down in there. So I think I might actually zip tie this on here as well. Just a bit of added security. There we go. Make it harder for this to come out. So now I can cut this line here, pretty much all around about there, and connect that into the pump line, like so. These fittings really do make building little systems like this easy. Now on this other side, I have this fitting I've made up, a section of 13 mil pipe with a plug in the end, a little valve here to control the flow and a little dripper on some spaghetti line that will feed the water into the uh, Dutch bucket. So again, it's as easy as pushing this fitting on here, have the kookaburras laugh at me as well, <laughs> and then run this over through the back to the system. I'm just going to secure this pipe now with a zip tie. They do have a little bit of a hole in there, which makes this easier. So pop the zip tie through there Probably turn it around the right way would help as well. Watch your green onions. And just zip it on to the stainless steel wire on the deck. So it doesn't have to be tight. And then this one up here. So I just drilled a hole to zip tie this on the side there, but thought I might have a few issues trying to get this in on the right angle. So I'm going to pop it over here in this corner here instead. And hopefully, be able to catch all this swarf uh, before it falls in there. Got that bit, got that bit, hurrah! So I'll just pop this zip tie in, there we go. And not too tightly, but just loosely. So we can move this in and out and position it around the plant. Back to the pump. Oh, I'm not gonna cut this line, I think I'll use the full length of it. And push it in there, there we go. And that is pretty much all it. Now I suppose before we turn any water on, I should probably turn these other valves off. That one there. And the one on the Dutch bucket as well. I'll just leave this up so you can see it start. And away we go. So there we go, we've got the water flowing there. So now this little dripper, turn this valve on and see what sort of water we get coming through here? Well, that's loads. That's more than enough for what we need. We really only just need a constant drip coming through there. So something like that. You can actually use these tops to um, retard the flow. So yeah, we'll keep that there like a nice little constant drip like that. And over here with this one, it's going to be a little bit harder. So let's try and pull him out. There we go. Turn this on. That will probably be all we need. Pop him down, make sure he catches. And it shouldn't be too long before we see water coming down through the drain. There we go. That flow's increased quite a bit, so I'm just going to um, turn it off a little bit. Because we really don't need a lot of water coming through. All we need is enough water to hit that sand and slowly wick up into the soil level. But all in all, I'm pretty happy with how it's going. We've still got drips up here. Yep, we've still got drips up there, so all is good. I think we're ready for planning out. So the little peppermint seedling I have has a lot of soil on it. So what I'm going to do is just wash it off in some system water. It's pretty easy. Just give it a bit of a swish. Just enough to get the bulk of the soil out. There we go. And then, Basically, pop him in a little depression in the top, work him down a little bit. There we go. And then make sure that this dripper is underneath the mass of the plant. And as that water drips through the clay, it will be feeding nutrients to the plant. And Bob's your uncle. Now, as for plants in the soil, we have a selection, we have time 
first off I think we'll plant a thyme over this side here because they grow fairly low and obviously we don't need to uh, wash off the soil with these guys. Just pop them down there, press them down firmly and away we go. And we also have some sweet basil uh, and some flat leaf Italian parsley which I think I might plant out first. I'm just going to plant out one cell of the parsley. I'm just going to plant it over in this side here because they can get pretty rambunctious. And then we will do some basil sowings, or plantings, I should say. Maybe one at the front there, one behind it, another one, pop him in the middle, and one more, I think, just there. Actually, we have some spare lemon balm, so I might pop this over here because it makes for a nice cuppa as well. There we go, so that's pretty much well that bed there planted out. So here we go, folks. It's been roughly 24 hours since I started work on the planters yesterday afternoon. And I'm happy to report we have no leaks there or under the little drain on the Dutch bucket. And I also haven't found any leaks on this pipework down here there in the center or over the back of this little soil bed. So well and truly pleased on how it's going. The plants have suffered virtually no transplant shock that I can see. It was, did have full sun on it earlier today before the clouds moved over this afternoon, but there's no wilting really. I was a little bit hard on this parsley root, but you might be able to wake out there's a numerous plants down there. So all we need is one to take off, don't we Jack? And yeah, we'll end up with a nice big bunch of them there. As for the peppermint, again, no transplant shock whatsoever. It looks to be doing fine. And yep, we've got a nice little drip coming down through there. And a nice little amount going into the fish tank. And the only issue I have had was I was a little bit um, messy with planting out the um, bed yesterday. So we do have some. Um, bits of the potting mix down the bottom there and some little bits of the um, the bark from the potting mix floating So all I'm going to do is just get a one of those fine mesh uh, fish um, Scoops and we will clean out the bottom of the tank, but yeah other than that I'm pretty chuffed with um, how it's running. So I think Jack is hungry wants a bit of human um, But that pretty much will wraps it up here for the plant side of this little aquaponic system folks in a couple of weeks We'll be putting in some crimson spotted rainbow fish uh, Just to fuel the plant foods. I will generate the nutrients for the plants. Will you stop eating me? Human isn't food and yeah, so come along for that clip All you need to do is hit that little subscribe button jump on over to the bell and fingers crossed YouTube will send you a notification when I release that video. Uh, before I go, a huge thank you to all you people who are supporting the channel by giving the videos a thumbs up and saying g'day in the comments section down below. It really does help the algorithm know that people like the video and yeah, we'll put it in front of the eyeballs of others and hopefully it will help the channel grow a little bit more. Uh, also, a massive thanks to all the folks who are supporting us by buying the online beginner's guide and also goods from our store, link for both down below. All those funds are going into the kitty for purchasing our new farm and also um, equipment and bits and pieces to make video. So by yeah, helping us there, you're also helping support the channel financially. Really do appreciate it. And yeah, hopefully there'll be some farm content coming very soon before the end of the year. But I will pretty much will leave it there. Jack is getting mighty hungry. Um, I do hope you have enjoyed this video and you've po possibly learnt a thing or two from it. And I will catch you next video in a week or so's time. Cheers folks and happy growing. Stop eating. I am not food.